Speaking of things that might be a, a, a hot topic in the future, you've had a filing for uh, single stock ETFs. Uh, I know it's a filing and it's not trading yet, but can you give us a little uh, insight into what you're thinking here and what kind of single stock ETFs you're filing for? Yes, uh, we, we filed for a series of uh, leveraged and inverse ETFs on single securities. Now, I can't speak much further than, than what has been uh, uh, put, put out in that particular filing for, for regulatory reasons, but you're absolutely right. Um, in my opinion, there's innovation that can still occur in the ETF industry uh, that we've seen over the years into different areas. ETFs were launched in a humble way just for just for a diversified portfolio of equities, and now it's in fixed income commodities. We're talking about thematics and inflation solutions. So we're always looking for ideas to provide traders, especially for the, our particular business. And these are tools, most of our ETFs are tools for traders, people who can manage their portfolios on a daily basis to make decisions either to amplify exposure or to hedge other risks in their portfolios. So can you tell us what stocks you filed for right now? And what, so it, this would be Amazon's one of them, right? There's, an, there's, an, there's a filing for Amazon, right? Correct. So uh, there's uh, filings for uh, Amazon, Meta, Tesla, among others. So really a core, uh, large, liquid uh, securities uh, that, that, that have been filed for at this time. And these would offer what? Leverage and inverse? It, 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 be a little more explicit. What, what, I, what this ETF for Amazon, for example, it would be two times levered. What, what's, what would you? What's the filing for? Yeah, exactly. So uh, it's a two. Uh, uh, each particular filing has uh, uh, a, a pair. So a two times on the upside, which is called a full fund. A two times in the bear, a bear side, a bear fund, and then also just a one x bear fund. So that's just the inverse exposure. It's important yeah. to remember. That like all leverage ETFs, these would be uh, uh, done on a daily basis. So really intended to be tools right. for traders, both to amplify or again to hedge that exposure. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is the first. Yours would, would be the first one in the United States that would be single stock ETFs. They there are they do exist in Europe, right? But I, I, there isn't any here in the United States that are single stock, right? That's correct. There's none in the, in the market today, but there is, uh, if you were to look overseas to, to the European usage market, there's actually a, a, a more than a handful of ETFs uh, that do simil uh, similar, have similar objectives, I should say, uh, that trade in that market. Um, but as we know, um, there are uh, other, whether we're talking about cryptocurrencies or others, there are actually markets that are actually ahead of the U.S. Uh, ETF market, um, whether it's, ca again, Canada or Europe, that we really hadn't seen in the past few years. So, um, they're really making innovations, and in some cases, we're now following. So, Ben, here we go. This is sort of the ultimate thematic tech ETF, a, a bet on a single large tech stock, whether it's Amazon or Tesla or several of the ones that, uh, that Dave has, has filed on. What, what do you think of this idea? Yeah, I mean, I, I would characterize a lot of what we've been seeing lately, Bob, at the margin uh, in the ETF space. Uh, as it pertains to, to product development like this, as it pertains to the trading volumes that we saw last week in some of the Russia-focused ETFs. This is, this is really the late Jack Bogle's worst nightmare regarding ETFs <laughs> manifest, that, that they become you know, a strictly speculative tool. You know, we've come a, a very long way um, from the origins of the space, and that's not to say that they don't have uh, a use case for for certain investors for speculation, um, but you know, for your average investor, you know, I, I wouldn't touch these things with a ten foot pole. Yeah, I, you know, I'm not trying to drag you into this, Jim, but Jack Bogle didn't even like an S and P 500 ETF because he thought it would encourage speculation and uh, intraday trading, as, the, as Ben aptly points out. Imagine what he would think of this at, at, at this point. I mean, it's really rather remarkable. Uh, uh, development, but that's logically, if people want to do it, fine, yeah, look, I guess, is the right answer, correct? Despite yeah. what Jack would think, and those of us who are Jack Vogel disciples might nod our heads in agreement, but... People use these for a lot of different reasons. They size them appropriately, people might have underlying exposures that they want to hedge or enhance, so I think it's all about using it intelligently versus using it speculatively, and like everything in this world, size it appropriately. Yeah, and now, of course, uh, Ben, we're going to have to explain what it means to have to adjust on a daily basis <laughs> for these funds. Like, remember what we did three, four years ago? 
uh, and, and, and how we had to do it. We're going to have to go back to that playbook explaining how you don't actually get, you know, if it's up 25 percent this month, you don't actually get it because of the daily uh, adjustment. And Dave, you're going to have to be explaining that a lot, too, I suppose, in the near future. Uh, do we have any sense, Dave, of when these might be able to begin trading or is that too far in the future to figure out? Yeah, I think that's a bit too uh, too far in the future to be able to, to provide any certainty around that. But again, you raise a great point. To me, whether we're talking about single beta ETFs or ETFs that are uh, intended for tactical traders, which these products would be, it's all about education, understanding how the products work, what your exposure is. And in particular, if we're talking about tools that are for trading, to have the ability to make a buy and a sell decision on a daily basis. And if that's the case, you know, I, I recommend investors doing their due diligence, getting their education, because these can be tools for traders uh, that can be very powerful for them if used appropriately. And we really, again, advocate for folks to do that due diligence, do the education on our website or other sources to understand that. And if they're not right for you, don't use them. Uh, again, yeah. if they're not right, if that's not your potential, stay away and look for other options to build diversified portfolios.